What is up everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are starting part three of the Gen 4 tuning guide. The This one in particular we're going to get into spark tuning, uh, just in the timing, and all that fun stuff. And then we'll also get into the setting up the histograms and the scanners to match our tables and how to log changes, etc, etc. But... Before we get into all that, let me do a little bit of housekeeping here first and say I want to thank all the new subscribers. We are well on our way to 4,000. You guys are the best. Thank you for sharing this content. Thank you for all of the likes that you guys have been throwing out there. These videos are just basically at the top of the list anytime anybody searches for HP tuners. That means we are getting this information out to the masses so they can learn to tune for free without having to go through all the heartache of paying for expensive classes and books and things like that. That being said, let me go ahead and pitch mine, uh, my class, <laughs> as it were. Actually, it's just my Patreon. It's down in the description. If you uh, want to support the channel or if you want a little help one-on-one -on -one tuning stuff, check that out. And then on top of it, we have the new merch store. I will be wearing the first of the uh, t-shirts that we got out, the Intune t-shirt. But we also have the awesome new Always Be Tuning shirt featuring the new Goat Low goat lope blah, the new goat rope garage logo so make sure and check that out it'll be down in the description below also but as i said thanks again to everybody for their support for their subscriptions and definitely for the thumbs up that's what drives this channel that being said let's get the disclaimer out of the way and then let's dive right into tuning timing once this video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Boom! We're done with that! So, check it out. We got the new logo up top. You guys like it? Leave a uh, comment down below. We are looking at a C6 Corvette once again like we have on the map and speed density. Some of this stuff you may or may not have, but the basis of this is the same for all Gen 4s. Honestly, timing's kind of the same all the way through. Now, you have to understand the uh, how where timing comes from, what we're adjusting to really get the benefit, get the most bang for your buck, as it were. There's a pun in there, if you understand where I'm going with this. Timing, when we talk about timing, we're talking about degrees of timing, and that degree is how soon before top dead center that we want to initiate spark. That's why we call it timing advance. So if you have 20 degrees of timing, that says before the piston is completely compressed, the air to fuel mixture, 20 degrees before that, we are going to go ahead, light off the spark plug, start the ignition process. That's because it takes a little while for that uh, mixture to fully ex you know, burn and get to the point where it is uh, providing the most amount of energy to drive the piston back down. That's why we do time in advance. Now, the, the thing about it is, generally you want as much time in advance as your engine can handle. How do you tell when you cannot handle any more timing? You start getting pre-detonation, which then gives you knock or ping. And so whenever we adjust timing off of a dyno, we start just advancing timing, specifically in the power areas, and looking for that knock or ping. Whenever we see that, we know we've reached our maximum amount of timing, then we start dialing things back. Now, that being said, as these systems get more complicated on these vehicles, there are a lot of things that can affect timing. We look primarily at the base map, which is down here in this area, the high octane and the low octane maps. The high octane is if everything looks good, there's no pinging, there's no pre-detonation, this is the commanded level of timing. Now, the low octane map is where it starts working down to as it sees time or sees knock. So, if you have knock, if you for some reason get a bad tank of gas or something, it will automatically pull timing out. So, you will see a discrepancy between the two the two tables if you open them up. See, we're kind of peeking out here in the power range about 24 degrees of timing on this setup. If we look in the same area, this is. Uh, going to be a 12 so it is going to subtract a full 12 degrees of timing if you are getting a lot of knock in there you probably won't ever see that full 12 degrees you can log that knock that's what we log whenever we try to tune our timing so that being said there's then all this stuff called the base corrections if you look there is a bunch of crap in here that can either add or subtract timing to that base timing a good example is a flex fuel table. This vehicle does not have flex fuel tables. 
But in most vehicles where there are flex fuel tables, you will actually see positive timing because running ethanol not only allows you to run more timing because it is less uh, prone to detonation or knock, but it also cools down the cylinder temperature, which also allows you to, you know, running cooler is another way that you can run more timing and get more power. And on top of it, methanol burns a little bit slower. So it is beneficial to start that process a little bit quicker than on gas. So if you are on a different platform than this, you will have some timing in those tables. And as you can see here, this one doesn't really make much of a difference because this table will, uh, as I said, modify when PE or cat over temp. But for the most part, we're not going to worry about those. Once again, the alcohol table zeroed out on this because we are not in a uh, flex fuel situation. But if you also look at IAT, this is going to be a table that looks at your intake air temps. And if you go across the top, you see once you get up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not that warm, you are already pulling timing out of the top end. So that might be a little aggressive. This is factory. You might come in here and pull two degrees across. Uh, the positive areas, subtract that out, maybe even go four degrees. Or you can leave this as is and then just adjust your base timing and leave that as a protection. Same ordeal whenever we have an ECT situation, engine coolant temp. Uh, you see whenever the engine's cold, it might add some timing down low. But whenever the engine gets up to operating temp, you should be in this 194 range should not be subtracting any timing. But if you get up to 212, it can get up to negative three degrees of timing. Once again, this could be a little bit overzealous. So you might come in here and dial that down a little bit. That's up to you. EGR shouldn't be any EGR on this. Uh, if your vehicle has an EGR system, same ordeal, you know, and so on and so on. These are all different things that can reduce your timing. So if you are having an issue where you're trying to command 24 degrees timing at this cell, and for some reason, no matter what you do, you cannot hit that. You can, as a temporary situation, come in and zero out these base tables. Once you zero those out, the multipliers don't matter because they are multiplying versus zero, so they will not affect your base timing table. Uh, I don't necessarily su suggest doing that unless you are chasing down a problem with getting your maximum timing that is in your high octane table. So that being said, all this stuff over here is basically idle based timing stuff. We won't get into that on this uh, topic. That's one for uh, another day whenever we talk about idle tuning on the Gen 4. And then the MBT table, this is the theoretical max power that is created. Uh, so these timing points that are in this table is what GM's engineers say on this engine platform produces the max power. This is not always true. If this were true, there'd be no reason to do timing tuning. So that being said, there's not really any reason to adjust anything on that table. And in fact, I think, yep, it says we do not recommend modifying this table down in the descriptor below. So we're not going to modify that table. We can still command more timing than we ever will need to just by adjusting our base tables. But let's go ahead and look at the retard table here. And this one is a bunch of stuff that predominantly deals with pulling timing out based on knock. In fact, I would guess most, if not everything on here is knock based. So there's a lot of stuff in here. If you start having issues where you are pulling too much timing out for knock and you're trying to uh, maybe isolate some false knock or things like that, you can come in. And one of the big ones is the maximum knock retard table here. You can see exactly how much timing it should pull out uh, based on knock, but you also have to remember that the low octane table is in play at the same time. So we saw 12 degrees there and maybe 10 degrees over on the uh, retard knock table, the minimum or the maximum knock table there. And so keep that in mind, these things work in tandem. And so you can actually pull out more than 10 if it thinks that it is a octane situation. Uh, and that's kind of what this octane modifier right here does. This learn down is uh, the, this is how much it is moved towards high octane if no octane is determined. The learn up is how much it moves towards the low octane if knock is determined. So this is the amount of degrees in a multiplier 
this thing you can actually come in and select this whole table knock it down by half and it will keep you from getting into the low octane table quite as quick so the cool thing about it is you can still have the protection of the low octane table but if you just come in here and put a 0.5 in and multiply it it won't go so fast into that same ordeal you can do this threshold that says uh if you it gets into the point where it exceeds the value like this is the most increment that it'll do is uh, two degrees you can adjust that down also or up either way uh same ordeal we got enable for the knock retard i would not necessarily completely disable this you're asking for a headache if you still have knock sensors keep this thing running this will keep you from blowing your motor up knock is not always a bad thing i mean knock is a bad thing but detecting knock and pulling timing because of knock is not always a bad thing so let's not jump overboard right off the bat and just be like oh we're going to blow this thing out and disable it Moving on, there's a bunch of other stuff in here, but as I said, we're not really going to ad adjust any of this because we're going to leave most of the knock learn in place as is to protect ourselves. Dwell, this is the spark dwell. This is based on an, uh, whenever you have a coil pack style spark system, there is some amount of spark that can be delivered to the spark plug after the initial point of impact, basically. And that's what spark dwell is. We you don't mess with this unless you need to mess with this. You're only going to need to mess with this if you're dealing with some severely modified, uh, you know, forced induced, uh, forced induction vehicles that are running a lot of boost, things like that, where you might be having an issue with a uh, spark quench or uh, your spark getting blown out. You can adjust your dwell time. I do not suggest messing with this on a even on a like an aggressive cam and, and maybe you're running 12 psi boost if you're not having any issues with your ignition system with getting the spark dialed in don't mess with this because this thing will burn up all kinds of stuff it'll burn up your plugs it'll burn up your plug wires it'll burn up your coils you can just completely wreck your ignition system by messing with the dwell stuff uh knock sensors this is the actual uh calibrations for the knock sensors and then the multiplier based on cylinders if you have specific cylinders where you're having issues you can knock the multiplier down to try and isolate those cylinders and this is more of a diagnostics tool once again this is something that i would not necessarily adjust the tip in stuff your transient mode you can adjust some of this if you think that you're getting false knock on tip in uh because honestly, you're probably not going to have much of an issue on tip end that's causing you to have detonation uh, unless for some reason you're running really lean. More of the issues that we worry about pre-detonation is the wide open throttle stuff whenever we are getting into power enrichment and things like that. Having too much advance up there will definitely cause some pre-detonation and cause some knock. So you can adjust the tip and transient stuff if you need to. But once again, unless you think that there is actually an issue that requires you to edit this stuff, I would suggest not editing that. So that all being said, how do we tune for knock or tune for timing? Here's the big thing. On a dyno, you adjust your high octane tables up until you no longer make power. That is your threshold for your timing. Pretty straightforward. On the street, though, what we do is we adjust our tables up until we start getting into knock, and then we bring it back. Now, there's a lot of areas on this table, and this is a very high advance for the bottom end. There's a lot of areas in this table that we don't necessarily need to worry about, one of them being below 0.32. This is all going to be off-throttle area, so don't worry about tuning knock there. Adding knock into that area is just going to cause you some fits, uh, so... We are going to look, this area down here is going to be the one where we get into the power band. And in this situation, you're probably going to be in this area the most. But that being said, we can come in here, grab 0.32 and on. And what we'll do is we will add some timing to this. Let me pull this over, see how far over it goes. Shouldn't go too much further. We will add timing to this area all the way past our red line, and I'm going to add two degrees in there, across the board, boom. That's it, that's our change. Now, while you're tuning this, some people will tell you to go in and adjust your low octane table to match your high octane table. I don't necessarily suggest doing that. Leave your low octane table where it's at. Once again, if you don't have knock, you will not be engaging with your low octane table. So. 
Now we need to jump over to the scanner, set up our histograms. This, this thing comes with a Spark Advanced and Spark Retard histogram from the factory. It will not work on most situations. We need to make some changes. Let me double check. We've got a Knock Retard PID is the one that we need to log in this situation along with our RPMs as usual, and of course our cylinder air mass. These are defaults, you know, cylinder air mass, RPMs, and honestly, knock retard is a, is a default always log PID on the scanner. Uh, then on top of it, uh, time in advance, another uh, default one. I'm not sure. Yep, there it is. Time in advance right there. So now that we've got those four, let's go into our graphs layout. We can use the base ones for our uh, initial setup. So here we have... Spark Advance, let's look for Timing Advance because that's what we're using on this one instead of Spark Advance. And then we will copy over our parameters. So our engine speed, uh, let's go ahead and copy our column axis labels over. Make sure that we're all matched up there. Remember, Control V, paste it in there for you. And then we'll do the same thing for our cylinder air mass. You come up here in the corner and right click, you can do row axis, copy labels. Cylinder air mass. Control A highlights everything. You can backspace and then hit Control V to paste it in. Well, that's going to be Spark Advance. Now we can come down on this one and do the same thing. We've already got the cylinder air mass stuff highlighted, so let's go ahead and paste that one in. And then we'll copy our RPMs back over. Column axis, copy labels, RPMs. Highlight that, delete it, paste it in. So you see how this says it is Spark Retard. We might have to do the Knock Retard PID. I think it'll change. See, it's changing it back to the generic Spark Retard sensor. But what we need to do is verify that we are reading everything in properly whenever we do this. So we could come in here, update this. I'm going to go ahead and add some cell hits to it to make sure we've got some filtered data. Same ordeal. Okay, here we go. Uh, could not find a, a fourth gen, but I found a fifth gen. Doesn't matter. We're still using the same graphs that we set up here. So as you can see, there's some knock on this table. What we will then do is now that we've gone out, done the log, and got some knock on there, we're going to go ahead and copy that and then go back over to our high octane table here. We're going to select the whole thing and then we're going to do paste special subtract. This is a little bit different than we normally do. That's because we want to take out the amount of knock that we picked up on that table. So there we've got a couple spots that we went in there. We'll save this. Boom, boom. File, save as. Da, 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 da. Timing. And then say we go out, we do it again, we get a log, same ordeal. We still got some knock in there. So we're going to copy it over, come back in to our high octane base table, highlight the whole thing, paste special, subtract. We're going to do this until we get rid of that knock. Once that we have that knock out of there, we've got a couple options. We can leave it as is, or we can go ahead and take a degree or two out of the area that we have been working in. So in this situation, say this is the first log that we got rid of all the knock. I'm going to come in here, highlight this area out, and I'm going to take one degree out. And now I have a table that is one degree safer than the bleeding edge table that we've been tuning on. And that's going to be my final spark table. I'm going to go ahead, save that as my final, upload that into the vehicle. We're going to call that good. And that's basically all there is to doing timing adjustments on this stuff. As I said, it's not the best, most elaborate way of adjusting timing on our platforms. But if we don't have access to a dyno and we have to do this on the road, it's about the only way to do it and get the max amount of power that we can get out of our platforms. And it works fairly easy. It's a pretty quick process. should only take you about four or five logs and tune adjustments to find where that threshold is. Normally you're going to be adding timing until you hit that threshold and then you're going to pull that timing out. And what you can do is go in, add that timing in, up until you hit your threshold and see where that stuff is at, subtract that out and then add a degree 
from that point. So you go in, you add it, you've hit knock in, say, four or five spots. You subtract that out, then you add a degree. You're probably going to get into just a fraction of knock in those spots again. But you might start seeing knock bloom out, or it may just be in those spots. If that's the case, you know those spots are kind of your trouble spots. You can just call it good there and subtract one degree back out from the the entire table. Or you can keep on trying to work up in different areas of the power band and see if there's room for improvement in those areas. So just because you have knock in this area right here doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have knock in this area down here. So once you kind of maximize that one, you can pull a degree out of that area and then keep on advancing this area until you start getting into knock. Do you understand what I'm saying as far as you can stagger all this out? So that's all pretty straightforward. We talked about this on multiple platforms. You can also go back and review the third gen stuff or the original tuning uh, the uh, timing video that I did that was based on the 5th gen, which looks a lot like the 4th gen, I'll be honest with you. But this should answer about all of your questions and get you on the right path for the 4th generation in getting your timing dialed in. As always, throw a thumbs up if you find this content helpful. Hit up the descriptions down below if you have any questions. Post them down there. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Let me know if there are specific things that I did not cover in this video that you have questions about or if you have suggestions about future videos. Get those in there. Uh, hopefully this hasn't been too long. I wanted to kind of touch on all of the topics that you might run into whenever it comes to adjusting timing on the fourth gen. And I'll answer some of your questions get you started down the right path. And as always, I want to thank you for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.